Uh, case in point, NVIDIA topping $900 today, a new all-time high. That's the first time that stock's been over $900 a share. 917 is where it is now. That's a 3% gainer. Any drop in this stock is quickly scooped up, and, and that's the lesson of what we're learning around NVIDIA. Yeah, I think if you're long the name, the only thing to really do is what I've been trying to do, which is make sure the position doesn't get too big, that it swamps the rest of your holdings. Um, but outside of that, this has been a get out of the way situation. Like, I don't, I don't know why you'd want to fight with this thing. I know there are people that ha have this, this thing where, like, whatever is going up and making people money, something must be wrong, and therefore they want to fade it or they want to think it's roulette and it's going to go black, 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 black. Okay, today it has to be red. You're welcome to play that game. I don't believe in it. I've never seen anyone do it successfully. So I think the attitude most people have had about this stock is own it, understand what's going on here is like once in a lifetime, appreciate it, and manage the position. So that's that's what I'm here trying to do. Uh, so far, so good. No complaints. Yeah, Mizuho today takes the price target to $1,000 from eight fifty. When you eclipse one target, you just simply bump yours up. Brian Belsky. You're trimming this. Uh, almost sounds a bit gratuitous, to be honest with you. You suggest it's tiny, 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 the trim, that is. And you're not trying to be too cute. But nonetheless, this stock is just uh, astounding. Brian, why do you hate NVIDIA? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, why are you bearish? Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we're humbled by that. You know, we've owned NVIDIA for seven years. And Josh nailed it. Uh, when you're looking at running portfolios, as we do, and we have concentrated positions and in our large cap portfolios, when you own 45 to 50 names, you run the danger of this position getting too big, especially with the run up. So are we being cute? I never have a problem with being accused of being cute. So <clears throat> let's take 50 basis points off. And if and when, like we think the market's a little frothy here, when the market comes back in, we'll add again. Do you think the market's too frothy? We do, um, and we have a real issue with everyone chasing the market, the herd mentality. What's really interesting for us, the majority of our competitors are saying right now what we said a year and a half ago. And the, the issue is, I think, playing the momentum game and I think straying from their process and discipline as strategists and just trying to play the upside. Now, just to be clear, we continue to believe that U.S. stocks are in a 25-year secular bull market. Within secular bulls, you have cyclical bears and cyclical bulls. The cyclical bull started in October of 2022. We've been on record on that since November of 2022. I have no problem with losing a little bit of, let's say, 50 to 100 points off our 5,100 target. But remember, we came out with our 2024 forecast in November of last year, and we said our bull case is 5,500. I still think we can get to our bull case at some point, but let's take a little bit of a breather here. We have too many bulls right now. Are, are, we, are we really that frothy in an environment <clears throat> where, it's kind of underscored today, rates are coming down, they're going to come down further? Earnings, at least as it relates to some of the largest multiple stocks in the market, are showing up. So maybe we're not that frothy as it would seem in an environment that is fast changing from a rate standpoint yep. and an earnings yep. standpoint. Our forecast all along is that the first half of the year that we're going to see rates around 4%. That's where we are. Are we frothy on a near-term basis? Yeah. According to history in terms of second years of bull markets, we're about 700 basis points ahead of the average bull market in four months into the second year over the last 13 bull markets. So with everybody agreeing that we're in a bull market and everybody trying to play this momentum game, when everybody agrees that things are positive, I want to go the other way. Just like when everyone's super negative, I want to be contrarian and be positive. I feel like there are still a lot of bears out there who are afraid to change their view now because they've been negative for so long. No, I think that's true on the, on the true bears that are always bearish, right? But you've seen these fringe people talk about being bullish, even though their kind of speak is actually quite bearish. So we are still very bullish longer term. We're long term investors in U.S. stocks. We think we can get stocks a little bit cheaper over the next few months. Jimmy, UBS today says price momentum as a style is, in their words, abnormally overbought. They point to semis being at the top of that list, plays off of NVIDIA. I could go down the list of the names that have just ripped and roared. Um, you trimmed NVIDIA too. Now, if we're having some sort of melt up, what are we supposed to do with it? Ride it. 
Right. The trim of NVIDIA was factually a mistake. I mean, I don't think we need to spend much breath on that. I'm very much with Brian on this, that it is frothy. I think we are in a melt up. Now, there's no definition of that, but I will tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride it until I get a distributive day. And when that happens, I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim in the semiconductor space, which is the epicenter, in my opinion, of this melt up. But I'm not going to try to anticipate it. That was a mistake with NVIDIA, obviously. And this thing can, look, it could turn tomorrow. Who knows what the jobs report is going to be. Or it could go another 10% higher. And my feeling on this is that on a distributive day, if I end up trimming Qualcomm or NXP semiconductors on a down 4% day, you can look at the charts of either of those companies because it's not just NVIDIA that's been melting up. These stocks, look at them one year or year to date. I mean, they are just, they are turning exponential. So if I end up giving up four percentage points on stocks that are up 60%, believe me, I can live with that. But for right now, ride it. Don't try to anticipate it. It can go on far longer than you I agree it's a sector-wide melt-up and just to put some meat but on you've been nervous sports. about the Nasdaq more than yeah. most yeah so mo mainly mega mega cap tech which as Liz said the, the buyers continue to come in you see like meta today is up four percent yeah meta and Microsoft uh, Nvidia is up Apple's right now. now trying trying to go positive I know the underperformers like the Tesla's of the world and the alphabets and the Apple's but at some level and maybe we're at it now or we hit it after the sell-off we got earlier this week the dip buyers say enough is enough these are the stocks that you want to be in because of exponential growth in their earnings power relative to AI. To be clear, you didn't really get a dip in Meta or Microsoft. You got one. <laughs> Apple, 17% uh, below its 50-day. That's a dip. Um, the, re the rest, not quite yet a dip. Um, but semis are just across the board. I was looking at some tickers. Uh, TSM up 5%. AVGO up three, ASML up four. Um, if you look at a 10-year annualized basis, the SMH is up 28%. That's annualized returns for one industry group within tech. That's more than double the S&P 500, which, by the way, hasn't had a bad decade. That's, the S&P is 13% uh, annualized over 10 years. So this is a, a group of winning stocks that continues to work its way higher. The fundamentals are not changing day to day to the degree that these stock prices and market caps are changing. That's, that's what Wolf that's says That's what today. a melt-up is.